Is this a 10? I don't know. It's really great, though. It's a really good album. It's really close. Hello, everyone. My name is Shiloh. I'm here with my co-host, Micah. Yeah. And we're coming back at you with another episode of the New Music Podcast. This time around, we're like having a whole little indie-themed week. It's kind of cool. It's kind of calling back. And Richie. Yeah, Richie as well. Yes. He's kind of the the odd man out here. But otherwise, we're kind of going down a little trip down memory lane as far as this actual channel is concerned, realistically. But uh, Micah, do you want to tell them what albums we are going to be going down memory lane with? So kicking us off we have rapper richie one third of injury reserve form formerly injury reserve yeah r.i.p yeah next up we have indie band vampire weekend and then after that we have the libertines they're like a, like a little punk thing going on there it's kind of indie kind of indie, indie indie punk i don't like yeah. that something like that and then we have a classic indie band uh is it the black keys or black keys it's the black keys all right uh, they got a the in there we were just going off on a tangent about bands that do or do not have a the before we recorded this <laughs> yeah we got, we got the the black keys today and then we have a little underground project right is this, is yeah. this, that's not one of the band camp it's on f music but... i found them on band camp and just thought it sounded interesting a little post-punk thing going on yeah, a little draw hollow with angel tape. Draw hollow. <laughs> draw hollow. It's a uh, kind of confusing name to pronounce. It feels like it should be draw draw hollow. It looks like or it's drawla. That's what we're going with for that one. Yeah, I'm gonna pronounce it differently every time. Alrighty, well, <laughs> kicking it off. Highly anticipated album from one third of formerly injury reserve Richie with a capital T. Yes, indeed. Triple digits, bracket one one two, close bracket. Yes, indeed. So, <laughs> this one's pretty interesting following up by the time I get to Phoenix, because that was kind of the last main big project he was a part of. Obviously not a solo project, so you had a little bit more going on, but I kind of feel like he's picking up where that album left off in a way. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, I completely forgot. This is Injury Reserve. What I took my notes on everything. Oh, that's crazy! I was just like, man, who's this? Who's this rapper? That's <laughs> awesome, bro. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't know what to expect, that would be uh, that would be a whole trip. Yeah, he's definitely staying in a pretty experimental lane with things. I feel like things kind of came to a chaotic peak with by the time I get to Phoenix. But yeah, I mean, if this was your introduction, this would be a pretty confusing place to start. I don't know how I didn't make the connection. I was like, man, this sounds really good. Yeah, I mean, he did formally go by Richie with a T, and when I saw this album pop up, I'm like, okay, well, the T is capitalized. I'm gonna assume that's him, and then I had to, like, look it up, and I'm like, okay, yeah, he just kind of shortened it. All right. Yeah, yeah, so it's a, it's a little bit of a departure on all fronts, but definitely still staying in that very strange, weird, experimental, sample-heavy, kind of lo-fi, distorted thing going on. All those buzzwords, if you want to use them it's a it's a really strange little hip-hop record the shit we love i hope yeah yeah no i am definitely a fan of this i think that there's a ton of really interesting ideas just going right into it the second track on here wytd it's what you're trying to do yeah yeah right what you're trying to do sounds <laughs> crazy it's super hard hitting and everything but then on the next track right after that it gets even more <laughs> crazy with that oh my God. sample <laughs> <laughs> Aliens, bro. Yeah, this one was produced so wild. 
oh my god, just, I'm listening to it again as we're talking about it, and just going back through in the the transition from the second track to the beginning of the third track, it's just like God, I. <laughs> Yeah, right. It really flows decently, but, you know, I mean, it seems like it should be listened to all together with this album because you have so many, like, smaller interlude moments, but my only issue with that kind of idea is that it seems like some songs just weren't fully fleshed out, and when you have the really full and complete songs on here, I'm like, wow, fucking more of this, please, but then you get some kind of, like, short ones mixed in there. It's it's a weird listen you know what i mean yeah well, so what was your examples of like the unfinished songs let's start with that let me just go down here so the keepers if we're gonna like literally keep going down the track the keepers the fourth track i mean it just feels like it should be longer what it does immediately with this sort of dark beat to it and everything is super cool and the sample in it is also like just really adds a whole atmosphere but it doesn't feel like a full song it kind of feels more like an interlude and then it literally has an interlude afterwards with uh only you just being a little spoken thing but then it kind of feels like the two tracks that come thereafter triple digits and dizzy are like the centerpiece of the album and then after that things get a little wild and kind of messy after that just just not super full songs yeah i understand like uh the keepers did lose lose some points for me i still thoroughly enjoyed the the part of the song we got but definitely wish there was more to be had there but mm. i'm not gonna lie triple digits and dizzy book <laughs> carried yeah. the album yeah dude those are great songs for sure i think this amine collab is excellent for real i even i even liked looping i'm not gonna lie yeah i was a big fan yeah 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 looping is uh is also a good one for sure I think that, again, like, it, it could be a little bit more flesh out, but the way that it's a more introspective song kind of makes the back half of this album feel a little bit more, like, emotional. I feel like on the first half, he's kind of just, like, talking his shit on most of the songs, and then things get a little bit more in, like, a sad bag towards the back end, and I think that's kind of the first example of it. It's like you're, you're hanging out with your friends, and then your friends leave, and then now you say it. Yeah, because I mean they left. I'd be <laughs> sad after I mean they left. Yeah. <laughs> like, even even the song how I don't know who Nyante is, but uh, I'm not sure who Nyante is. I'm not really familiar with the name to be honest. He is a rapper from Milwaukee. Really? And then then moved to Florida and now lives in Brooklyn. He's been to the three places yeah <laughs> all over the place <laughs> but yeah right from the source over here with some wisconsin yeah. guys but yeah that's cool um i think he sounds all right not my favorite feature on the album but well definitely I adds mean, a bit how could he be your favorite feature on the album well yeah i mean you got amine right there and man i'd love to see another amine and richie collab because we had was he on jailbreak the tesla right yep he was yeah yeah okay yeah that that was a crazy song and this one's just as good honestly such a good centerpiece to the album for real no, i i honestly really liked uh Neonte's feature on how yeah every feature on here got a really high rating besides mm -hmm. the track uh the thing that one you got a high rating but it wasn't nearly as high as like uh really the, the rest yeah you didn't like quelle chris on that it just wasn't hitting this i liked it i it, it's a 78 i gave all my tracks out of 100 this time and that was a 78 out of 100 for that track still yeah i have an eight on that one so we're pretty much on the same page yeah i would it would have been an eight if i was doing out of 10 yeah i think both of these songs don't really like the last two that we just mentioned don't really have the thing with the one with amine where it feels like a super complete song though and that's kind of what i'm also saying is back half of this album it feels like we could have used a maybe like a stronger hook or something like that but at the same time i kind of get it too because there's so many lyrics on here about not really caring about what the mainstream thinks and wants and trying to be weird having actual interest interesting ideas so i understand he's probably not trying to make catchy songs or yeah, yeah. yeah. it's def he's trying he's trying to try and something new he's trying he's trying new ideas for sure yeah yeah and i think sometimes gets a little bit lost in the sauce 
with it, but overall, really great sounding stuff. Five on the Dot, what did you think of this song? Because I think it's pretty cool. I think that was my least favorite track on the album, actually. Mm, really? Yeah, let me go through it. It is kind of long. It's kind of varied in all of the things that it's doing and takes a really conversational tone with it. But I think what he's trying to do is maybe portray like self-doubt and depression and anxiety with it. It feels like it's a really dark sounding kind of unsure and uncertain track and really does a lot with it definitely not one of the easier ones to come back to and one of the more like listenable tracks but i think what it represents and means to the album as a whole is like a pretty cool moment for it oh definitely there's no bad tracks in this album no in my opinion yeah it's my least rated track but like i mean look what it's stacked up against i also don't count interludes mm-hmm. in my score yeah so The way I've always approached interludes is a little bit different than how some people do, because I guess, I think, while it's not a real song, per se... That's the atmosphere. Yeah, it adds to the atmosphere, and it can still be done right or wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think the way he puts credits at the end of the album is, like, a perfect send-off, because that track still sounds cool while having only just, like, one specific purpose in mind. Yeah, I either give no points, full points, or half points on interludes. I, yeah, I, I that's usually fair. just kind of, like, vibe out. I, I usually vibe it out with that. I gave full mm-hmm. points on all, all the interludes here. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly what the point of Only You really was here for, but then you have other ones later on the album. Oh, like, um, fucking, which one was it? Your Worst Nightmare Worst is nightmare. awesome. <laughs> yeah, dude. I love that. Who is this guy? Where did he find him? <laughs> Written by Malik Richard and Nathaniel Ritchie. Dang it. I don't think that's either. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's awesome, though. It sounds super cool. It <laughs> it's it's kind of funny. I love the bars here. Me too, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah. You open it up, and it's me sitting at the bottom with a tech inside. I pop out. Say hello, the weapon, right? I was like, hell yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this guy's tone is just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah crazy one crazy album all around i'm really excited to see what richie does solo and with by storm when things are a little bit more solid and they're not like working out all the aftermath i guess with injury reserve because this feels like him kind of picking it back up and doing something again i guess yeah and it seems like he can go more places with it but i think what we got here was really great anyways for real dude yeah what was your overall score i gave this a 79 percent. that's where i was at like before this episode i was actually at 79 but i ended up bumping it up to an 82 nice after like a couple more listens nice yeah you know i think it has room to grow on me so maybe we'll kind of be on the same page at one point or another definitely yeah and also i it like hit just right yeah and it's definitely one that you gotta kind of be in the right mood for i feel like yeah yeah for sure um yeah. definitely a really interesting <laughs> one to check out regardless obviously both of us recommend it i can see it not being everybody's thing but it's it's a super cool album yeah dude yeah for sure so then we can move on to one of the year's most anticipated albums what i would think anyways i think that's a fair assessment with vampire weekends only god was above us I hated this album. (laughs) (laughs) I I really doubt you're serious, right? (laughs) Nah, I'm Uh, so (laughs) snotline. Yeah, I'm I'm like, there ain't no way. There ain't no way. This is so your bag. (laughs) Is this a 10? I don't know. It's really great, though. It's a really good album. It's really close. It's it's awesome. I'm just going to come right out the gate. And I'm going to say I gave it a 94. That's pretty high, boss. Yeah, dude. It's fucking... But you know what? It kind of earned it. <laughs> what, what'd you give it? What'd you give it? We're just going to give scores out the gate. <laughs> yeah, dude. I was sitting on it for too damn long. 
I, I'm sitting at an 89% with this one, but what's interesting about it is I wasn't expecting it to be anywhere near this good after listening to Father of the Bride, and I think Father of the Bride is the only Vampire Weekend album that does not have room to grow on me. This one has a lot of room to grow on me still. I don't feel like my feelings are going to be what they are forever on this album right now, but like, yeah, I'm sitting at an 89 for it. 89, that's Crazy. That's crazy. I was I was expecting you to be lower. This is also one of my like medium takes. Yeah, yeah, no, that's not that's not super hot of a take. I think people are really loving this one and I think it's for a really good reason. Me and the melon agree on it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, he was sitting at a light nine, so <laughs> oh. <laughs> to be particular if we're gonna if we're uh-huh. gonna bring the melon up all, all day here. But <laughs> <laughs> I just had a really strong strange arc in the last week with vampire weekend and i've been kind of keeping you updated on it you go a ways back with them don't you yeah bro well speaking of which i need to check my messages because i i texted my mother asking if she knew what vampire weekend cd we had I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it was probably the debut no she doesn't remember ah damn Gotcha. But yeah, I kind of do, but not in a way where like I have nostalgia for them or anything. I remember Vampire Weekend getting suggested a lot back when I did reaction videos and I'm like, you know what? We got four albums here. I'll just check out the first one and see what they're all about. And I'm like, this is some pretentious fucking bullshit to be honest with you and that album has grown on me a little bit the self-title didn't exist jeff rosenstock's single ska punk wouldn't exist (laughs) (laughs) you know (laughs) i i don't know man looking back i just feel like that hasn't aged the best and and everything so it's it's kind of i'm just kind of whatever with it but that one i just gave a 67 i i went through the whole discography this last week just so i'm like i need the context right and i needed to get it you know but now i get it because contra and modern vampires of the city are fucking awesome i feel like it takes all of what wasn't matured about their sound and really brings it to a great place with that album or those two albums. I I mean, I think modern vampires of the city is, is still their masterpiece, their magnum opus with this album existing, but it takes that sound and picks it up, brings it to a more experimental place is how I feel about only God was above us. I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. I really, really, really like this album. Like, it, I was just every the beginning to the to end. I was just like, "Whoa, dude!" <laughs> like no, no track here got less than an eighty for me. Me either. Uh, I do have one hot take with this album. I did. I did like something a little more than everybody else did. Which song? I'm gonna guess your least favorite track was "Prep School Gangsters." You know what? I think you're correct, but that's yeah yeah that was my least favorite on here but it's not for anything it does wrong it's just for what it isn't doing because i feel like that's the most just like straightforward rock song on this album i ended up giving that a little higher score than okay. a lot of people did so i ended up not hitting it even close to the least favorite mm. uh my least favorite ended up being pravada but like even really? then i can't really I, it's just on the on paper it's not my least favorite track <laughs> but like no, no chance technically, no chance yeah. you like pravda the least i technically ah oh, man it's pretty even it's super even I, I can't even lie to you it's all the fucking same number but like no, i get it one one number less yeah okay that's that's fair that's fair i understand i just think that that is one of the coolest sounding songs on here genuinely it really gets in this kind of nostalgic emotional bag with it and then it does get all like psychedelic with it later on in the song doing everything that i want these songs to do but i mean it's not my only favorite song on the album by any means but connect is my favorite track same actually is that not usually the case uh it's like a medium take i don't know man i loved connect yeah that one kind of gives me animal collective vibes and stuff in a way too yeah, so same. it makes sense that both of us would like that kind of coming from a little bit of that like indie psychedelic rock stuff um 
Wow, it, it's just produced so nice, though, too. Like, such a great use of layering all of the instruments on here. It's it's really varied throughout. You know, lyrically, this whole album's pretty great, too. I would even go as far to say is it uh, this album and that song blew my dick clean off. It blew your dick clean off. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> Bringing it back once again. <laughs> Yeah, you know, finally, something to blow my dick clean of. Finally, finally, it is returned. <laughs> you know, you haven't said it in a while in here, and I feel like we have kind of had like a little bit of a slow patch almost in music. I mean, maybe not with some of the some of the albums. My cat is screaming in the microphone. I, I, I heard it. <laughs> all, all I heard was. <laughs> 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 yeah, but this is this is one to do that to you. This is an album that's gonna take you and be like, "Hey, check this shit out! It's fucking crazy." Even your cat was like, "Fuck yeah, dude!" Even my cat's a big fan. <laughs> God, Connect is just so good. Oh, yeah, I, I wrote down to go back and look at the lyrics for Classical. Did you uh, annotate that? Classical? Yeah. yeah, so that was another not, like, top favorite for me, but it's the moment where I really got into the album because the opener didn't do a ton for me, and I was really, Same. like, immersed into that song in particular. I think that lyrically what they're doing on here is how like the rich and powerful upper class kind of rewrite history and control a lot of things it feels like they're getting really self-aware because one of the biggest like critiques but also a piece of their aesthetic in their earlier days was the fact that their upper class like uh, Ivy League school students and kind of doing that whole thing. It was always a little bit self-aware, but here it feels like they're not so much just being part of the upper class, but also critiquing it, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I understand that. Also, I would have to agree on the opener not doing a lot for me at first. That was almost my least favorite check. It almost is mine it's as tied. well. Yeah, for me it's tied with prep school gangsters, like we said before. I figured it would but... be. Yeah, yeah, I I think it does some nice things overall, but it didn't really take me in fully just to start off the album. I'm like, this is a great song. I don't know how much I'm going to love the album from here, but luckily it really picks up from there. And I think classical is great, but the run of tracks from classical to connect is is unbeatable because capricorn is another favorite for me capricorn goes so hard where did capricorn go on my track list i think i slipped and deleted capricorn <laughs> oh, no. yeah capricorn okay shit balls Cap capricorn was supposed to be my favorite my second favorite track yeah it's great it's awesome so good such a sentimental feel to this song and the way the second chorus comes in on that track gives me chills like it's such a good moment all right sorry i'm just fixing my notes yeah, I figured. You're good. All right, yeah, there we go. Nice. <laughs> I was wondering, because at one point, like, it, it had pasted 380s over my, my score, and I, like, slipped and was fucking with something under my desk. <laughs> and I'm just like, what? Yeah. <laughs> What's going on there, boss? All right, it's fixed now. Yeah, bro. I don't, I, this album's so good, and it's just like, yeah, dude, just go fucking listen to it. I don't even have a whole lot to say about it. Just, like, just go listen to it right now. <laughs> I also love that it's rewarding as a close listen because my first listen was very casual like I was just doing other things yeah. and I'm like okay yeah this one's good it's on like the same line as you know maybe Contra or whatever but then yeah it really did improve when I focused in on it and kind of dialed in a little bit more I think that that's kind of the case for all three of their albums that I would consider great but this one especially like it really just takes you and makes you immersed Vampire Weekend only has three up Contra Modern Vampires of the City and only God was above us. A father of the bride is not real. Yeah, well, you didn't say they're self-titled in that, and I would by no means delete their self-titled. No, I wouldn't delete it. It's there. I, I would delete Father of the Bride. I'm not even gonna lie. Father of the Bride is is non-canonical at this point. Like, it, it's just like a side quest. It doesn't exist. It's not even rated that bad. 
Steve Lacey's on it? What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. And if you ever listened to it, you'd probably never notice. <laughs> I... Like, it's just such a nothing album. Fucking Father of the Bride, I mean. It really just doesn't go anywhere. They kind of just sound like folk cold play. Yeah, dude, I remember when that shit came out. I was like, oh, hey, you remember we could drop. And then I was like, ugh, brother, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they cleaned everything up and got, like, kind of mass appeal with it. And I feel like it was just a lot of music and nothing happening during it and it's so nice to see this one sliding right back in place with those first three albums they're like oops (laughs) yeah they really said oops sorry and fixed it five years later i guess but still i'll take it yeah i mean it would be such an unsatisfying discography to go through before this album came out but now it's super satisfying the fucking closer bro god damn oh god yeah such a great one there too yeah i mean gets in that like depressed Mm, listen to it right now yeah (laughs) yeah it's (laughs) it gets in that like depressed feel it's got that whole like balladry vibe to it and the way that one like slowly layers up through time it's just super nice this whole album sounds so nice it's produced so well well they could afford it that's true (laughs) (laughs) you know really you could have ruined this album by producing it terribly but i'm so glad that they had competent people in the studio yeah they produced it terribly probably been really sad yeah right it mixes like lo-fi with super like over the top production at some times and it's it's a nice balance. It's probably their most experimental album. Would you agree? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's off the top of the dome piece. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think so. I think so for sure. Well, this has been a very unstructured <laughs> conversation on this album, but nonetheless, we're just kind of nerding out about it, regardless. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I, we I don't think we have anything really interesting to say about it because it's just like, oh yeah, that that really good album's really good. You know, it really is kind of that vibe once again. Everybody's kind of digging this one. We're digging it too. It's awesome. It's a cool album. So I mean, what more is there to say? really so that wraps it up on that one and we can move on to the libertines all clear or what is all it all quiet all quiet on the eastern esplande If I'm saying that word right, Esplande, I I don't know, man. I haven't seen that word before, and I meant to look up what that means. (laughs) I'm sorry. Esplanade. What? (laughs) (laughs) Let's see here. And Esplande is, or promenade. Oh, I've seen the word promenade before. Yeah, (laughs) it's a long, open, level area next to a river or large... Okay, so it's literally just a mass of land. That's kind of what I figured. It's like a physical location, but um, yeah, (laughs) so that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, this one... Was fine. It was fine, you're right. I was not expecting to enjoy it, to be completely honest with you, because... I remember doing a reaction video to their comeback album in 2015. Like, obviously, I didn't do the reaction video in 2015, but it was a reaction to that album. And then this is, like, a comeback album to their comeback album, and I already thought their last comeback album was pretty mid. So I'm like, ooh, this is going to be pretty ugly, because I figured this was just going to be, like, the most mid that it ever gets. And I kind of had fun with a little bit of it. Yeah, the last album looks like it was received worse. Yeah, it it seems that way. A little bit. Actually, by the user score, it's the fucking same, but... Oh, really? uh, 67, 68. I'm surprised. I like this one a lot more, I think, at least in the current day, because I was kind of more in this indie rock kind of garage rock whatever you want to say bag at the time that i listened to that previous libertines album but i'm not really as into that now as i once was so i feel like if i came back to that album that came before this i would just be yawning my way through it but this one's kind of fun it's kind of fun i definitely wasn't yawning my way through this one but i wasn't like oh 
book yeah, the whole time. Yeah, right. There's a couple songs that are good. Like, I like the opener, Run, Run, Run. It's pretty good. Me too. I found myself really enjoying that while driving at one point, and I'm like, you know, hey, like, they're actually kind of doing the thing here. This is fun. This is fun to listen to. There's a, there's a hint of corniness throughout the album, though, which is kind of like, okay, guys. Yeah, calm down. I would totally agree. Some of the aesthetics they uh, they dive into, whether it be kind of the clap rock stuff or them going for this, like, Western folk vibe, kind of does feel a little corny to me. But at the same time, I feel like it's a little bit self-aware, so I can kind of sort of give it a pass, if you know what I mean. Yeah, that's why like, the album overall it wasn't like, oh my god, fuck this shit. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> even one of their little more corny songs, Merry Old England, mm. which I feel like, is it, were you referring to that in your previous statements, sir? Kind of. Merry Old England kind of ends up being my least favorite, I think. I was like, I mean, this is like some dad shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it... Mm. Kind of all is, but yeah. But that one especially, that was, it's a, it's a, like, isn't that one of the song about a boat? What? Isn't this a song about a boat? About a boat? Yeah. I, I really don't know, man. No, no. I, I, I can't remember if it was this or something else, but like, there is a song, it reminds me of the song about a boat that everyone's dad will know if you're if you're confused what I'm talking about. I'm pretty fucking lost, to be honest. <laughs> I would go ask your dad, or someone else's dad, preferably. <laughs> I'll go ask someone else's dad about a song about a boat, and maybe it'll just be this song. <laughs> no, it won't be the song. Songs who knew? I don't know yet. <laughs> yeah, right. They'll get there. I don't know. I think that song is kind of trying to make some commentary and stuff in its lyrics and whatever. I don't know. I, I don't want to be like... No, you can't do that. Absolutely not. Like, I wouldn't ever say that you can't go for, like, a deeper message at all. I just kind of think that they're at their best when they're making songs that are a little bit more fun and a little bit upbeat and just kind of not totally mindless rock songs, but just stuff you can, like, nod along to, you know? Yeah, like, oh shit, if you don't think about it. Oh shit is awesome. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I love that song. It is... Just like Run, 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 it is a song that just kind of goes hard in the car and you don't have to think too much about it. The only song that I really, really end up enjoying that you do have to think about in any way is Night of the Hunter. What did you think of that song? Oh, uh, I believe I liked that song. I believe that one's my hot take as well. Uh, no, that was not my hot take. That was the cult that everyone agrees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's one of the best songs. Oh, yeah, no. Me saying Merry Old England is a banger is the fucking hot take. Yeah, I I will agree with the consensus more than you. Uh, that one puts me to sleep a little uh, bit, but... Well, it's got a 72. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I was like, I was about there. Not gonna lie. Yeah. I don't know. I think the only time the storytelling comes through or really any of the more downtrodden kind of slow pace to a song really translates well is night of the hunter i think that there's some good storytelling in the lyrics again and it sounds nice but again it definitely sounds a bit corny but i can also totally excuse it is is the way i would also put it with that song night of the hunter was almost my favorite track it ends up being between run 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 and oh shit yeah for me i also really liked shiver that's the reason that run 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 doesn't quite crack my top three is because shiver is here you like shiver yeah i think it sounds cool that's like your medium fake really the consensus on the last one two three four tracks is 69 69 68 and 66 i think that's fair because songs they never play on the radio is pretty bad sucks yeah (laughs) yeah we could have done without that that song entirely just leave it off at that point but then be young before it is another huge misstep kind of going into the end of this album and i really wish that the whole thing did close on a better note closed on shiver be happier yeah yeah if it closed on shiver dude awesome super cool i'd love this album a lot more but these last two songs do nothing for me because be young sounds cool at first but then it just becomes a mess like it just kind of caves in on itself and goes nowhere i was reading reviews after i listened to the album and after the interview and and i saw one where it said they have middle-aged and i feel that (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. 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 Feels that way a little bit. Songs they never play in the radio kind of pissed me off to go through. <laughs> so I was just like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. It feels like where do you get off writing a song about this? Because they could kind of play all of your songs on the radio. <laughs> I, I literally, <laughs> no. like, I didn't write this down, but I meant to. I was like, oh, this is like Walmart Dad, Target fucking soundtrack type shit yeah which is really weird given the point of the song yeah yeah you really gotta sound a little bit more strange or at least have like some heavier elements something like that to be like yeah they're never gonna play this shit on the radio and i i know that's not entirely the point of it but it feels like it's the undertone of what they're saying here i don't know yeah it's it's corny it's corny what did you end up scoring this thing i give it a 65 out of 100 i'm sitting at a 67 we're about on the same page i don't know i just enjoyed this more than i thought i would so i'm a little bit impressed do we have anything else to say about this would you give it 67 yeah i go to 65 so yeah we're, we're pretty even on it once again as per usual yes indeed we sure are now we're moving on to the black keys with their new lp ohio players Cause this is no way. The black key. Wait, hold on. Is it is it players? Oh no. I think it's prayers, right? It's players. Oh, what the fuck? Man, why do I always do this? I have a, a tendency to copy down song titles and album titles wrong, so I really thought this was Ohio Prayers the whole time. Ohio Prayers no. makes a lot more sense. Um, so we'll yeah. just we'll just roll on that. Uh, <laughs> So, the Black Keys, Ohio players. Why is this man sticking his fingers in his own asshole on the cover? Is, uh, I'm not entirely sure that's a dude, but... I don't care. Yeah, what's going on there? The question, the question still stands. The question still stands. Yeah, you know, I kind of noticed that, too. I feel like there's, like, some sort of innuendo thing going on with this cover, and I don't like it (laughs) yeah it gives me a weird vibe i don't know i don't like the way they plastered the black keys just like over the bowling ball like the whoever did the photoshop it doesn't look very good no it's not a good cover it's uh (laughs) this should go on your list of bad covers you know what i'll add it right now (laughs) check out the album of the year account boys got a whole (laughs) list on there it's like a few hundred fucking bad album arts so there we go this would be pretty low on the list you know it's not like that egregious but like no No, and you know what i gotta feel the same about the music on it it's not like super bad but Uh, oh my god i I didn't like this shit at all no it's not very enjoyable it's kind of just like if you take everything we just said about the libertines and then make it a lot worse (laughs) yeah yeah this album didn't get in the red for me it was just like it was so mid it did start Mm -hmm. i didn't want to like score too low either because it did start pissing me off at one point so i was like ah it's just fucking arcade fire all over again whoa that's a weird comparison (laughs) i fucking hate arcade fire bro i i (laughs) It's it's the same bag for me, bro. You can't say that on the Vampire Weekend episode, brother. They're going (laughs) to eat you alive. (laughs) I'll fight all of you. This shit's mid. This shit's mid. And, you know, I don't think I've heard anything from the Black Keys that isn't, but what pisses me off is that when they get to their best songs, I'm like, oh yeah, these guys could make a fucking killer album, but I just haven't heard that killer album yet. And to be fair, I haven't heard all of their albums either but there's one song on this album for me uh which one is it this is nowhere yeah yeah this is nowhere was a positive start to it i will say that much it was a dumpster fire from there i don't know man read them and weep is kind of fun i guess i forgot to be your lover was pretty all right i think at that point like track 12 more to just like fuck this shit bro i don't give a shit anymore yeah you just kind of checked out at that point yeah i mentally checked out i want to say around candy and her friends well that means that you check out before paper crowns so um that that's good that's good don't pay attention to paper crown <laughs> Beck was on this. Beck and Juicy J. <laughs> what a list. 
<laughs> I gotta say, man, that was a, that was a pretty unexpected collab. I did hear some some jigginess getting in there, and I was just like, oh, shut the hell up. <laughs> what? What are you saying? You know Will Smith's fucking um, rep career? Yeah. So I used to be really into that as a kid. Oh, man. <laughs> Whenever I hear, like, the record scratch in a cornball setting, I'm like, shut up, Will Smith. Oh, man, that's fucking great. What this reminded me of, what that song reminded me of, is when Fall Out Boy did a remix album of American Beauty, American Psycho, and then put a bunch of rappers all over it, and, like, yeah, every song would do this thing where, like, the beat gets all, like, slowed down and, like... Just doing this corny ass fucking rock kind of rap beat, and then they let the rapper just lay down what is going to inevitably be just nothing but filler bars. Juicy J doesn't need to be here. Like, God, what, what the fuck? Juicy J doing, doing here, what is he doing here? Go, go do something else, please. What the fuck? Um, I'm looking at his uh, his albums. See him, see a lot of red and yellow, ketchup and mustard. <laughs> Mustard. Man, I don't know, man. Ju- Juicy J is like, he's got kind of like some classics and whatnot, but. He's got an album called Space Age Pimpin'. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. He's he's kind of he's kind of this guy doing this shit. But also, what the fuck? What? Why is he? Why is he here in the year of our Lord, twenty twenty four? What is he doing? Like, I just don't, I don't know, understand. Man. This is it's, not they. The black keys are like we have a black friend. Look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is kind of what it feels like with both of the rap verses on here. It's What's just Beck doing here. I don't know. He doesn't add anything to the song either, though. All I know is mellow, mellow gold like everybody else does. Oh, wait, wait, no, he has a good album? When did Beck do a good album? I have no idea. Apparently, for his 1996 album, Odelay, is apparently really good. Mm, yeah, yeah, that sounds familiar now. I don't know. I have never found myself being a Beck fan. I'm not really all that well-versed, but, like, what a list of names, man. God damn. I'm just looking at his albums now, and, man, go go look at Beck's last album cover. That's badass. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> at this point, I feel like we're talking more about the features than the album because there's just nothing to talk uh, about I... with the album. <laughs> I don't want to talk about the album. God, dude, there's just nothing to really say. It's just, it's just here, bro. God, and what sucks though, too, if we're gonna talk about a pretty similar song with Candy and her friends that also has the same type of unnecessary rap feature, th- that song sounds cool before it gets to its like corny rap transition thing. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, that is my least favorite song on the album. Uh, Paper Crown is mine pretty easily. It's fair. I totally understand. God, the whole thing they're working with is just gross on that song, but Candy and her friends. Like, I guess I gotta give it some credit because the beginning of it sounds cool, but God, dude, it just ruins it. Man, I'm I'm already checked out, bro. I don't want to fucking talk about <laughs> the Blackies ever again. If they ever do an album again, I don't know if I want to talk about it unless it's, like, really good. You know, they are really just kind of putting in their time at this point, I think. I have checked out most of their music that's came out in the last few years. I remember kind of liking Let's Rock, but God, dude, I can't even remember if I did or did not listen to Drop. Out boogie. I listened to Two Brothers as a kid because, like, that was just the era. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I was like, this is okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Which is, like, kind of a hot take because it's pretty well received. I just have <sighs> El Camino as their album in my mind. Like, that's the one that exists as far as I'm concerned. But it's kind of just been a slow fall off since then. God, I will say, though, I like this better than Delta Cream because at least this has some songs where I'm like, hell yeah, you know, this is a little, this is a little rock tune. This is okay. Cool. Delta Cream literally put me to sleep. I could not focus on that album for the life of me. Just about drove off the fucking road listening to that album when it came out. I would understand. Yeah, God, so dull where they're at right now. I don't know. Thank you for not making me listen to that album. Uh, yeah, well, that was that was a little while back at this point, but shit, yeah, dude. I mean, maybe we can consider this an improvement, but there are some really ugly missteps. Um, fuck, I don't know, man. <laughs> All right, let's just move on, bro. What was your score? 50, right down the middle. 50. 
50. Me too. Really? We both yep. were just on the same. Wow. That's so strange. I wanted to give it a lower score, but I didn't want to like be mean. So I gave it the best objective score I could. And that landed on 50. I feel like it's just that because there's a couple songs that are specifically bad to me and a couple songs that I specifically am pretty okay with and think are all right to listen to but everything else is just so in the middle just just some real mid happenings here yeah bro yeah all right what's what's next we got we got draw hall gala fall <laughs> Yep, we got Drala Angel Tape. On I could touch the earth, see, feel, earth, wind, fire. I could hold my breath for another time. I could see go, precious more, so real time. If you want, if you want. Fairly average size album. Got 10 tracks, 34 minutes. Yeah, pretty quick listen, and they do a lot with a little. Been holding on to this one too. I really like this album, don't get me wrong. It was very good. But the song, uh, Talking Radiance. Go listen to Talking Radiance right now. Go listen to the intro of it. Um. Yeah, okay. What about it? That is a garden song. Oh, really? I don't know. I, I feel like I'm being sonically gaslit. I don't think I recognize it from anywhere, but I mean... It's from one of their, like, super fucking, like, underground shitty tapes. Mm. And I'm just like, I I swear to God, I could be wrong, I could just be crazy, but a lot of this album does sound like The Garden anyways, just with, like, the fucking bass. It, I definitely, maybe some influences from The Garden, or maybe they were just both influenced by Primus quite a bit. I got, I got those vibes from it. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, this does kind of feel a little Primus at times. This is less Claypool with the saxophone, dog. <laughs> it's kind of badass, <laughs> yeah. Dude, I, so I do love the sick. saxophone additions to things. It's very cool. Okay, so I wrote down i thought they sampled the garden but i couldn't find it that is my favorite track on the albums i do just like i like the garden a lot yeah no that is one of my favorites i think i like lip sync the most but yeah lip sync is my second i wrote down in all caps sounds itching my brain thank you yeah yeah it's a really great <laughs> sounding album like everything's balanced out super nice dude you got some you got some really sick bass on here you got a weird vocal tone from the vocalist here like you don't often see a female-led punk band and i'm glad we're seeing that here because i don't really know all the context here but what she's doing is pretty awesome with the vocals on this one i got a little bit of like black dresses vibes at some point like a like a clean version basically out of lip sync so i'm going i'm going and listening to beautiful friendship really quick to make sure i'm not like crazy yeah i feel like you could kind of pull from some of the same post-punk influences yeah, that's that's a little bit of reaching. Yeah, I think black dresses is like, oh, calm down. Yeah, that's more of like an electronic thing they have going on. Yeah, but yeah, this is pretty raw and straightforward with everything it's given you. And I really liked that there's a strong separation between the instruments and everything is super cleanly mixed. So it just all sounds really nice. Yeah, dude. Yeah, punk sex man haunts my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> and at sometimes it does get like almost disturbing with how it sounds. It's like got a little uncomfortable vibe to it at times. Uh, the track Venus on here is pretty easily the biggest switch up into this cold That's an interlude. piano thing. Yeah, I mean, it is an interlude, but I, I guess, right? I mean, it's an interlude. You think so? I think so, because A was the instrumental track. Yeah, right. A was more the instrumental, or more the interlude. I did write down rad as fuck for the interlude, though. Yes, yeah. For A, you mean? Uh, for Venus, because A, A was oh, okay. the instrumental track. Yes, yeah. So Venus was probably the strangest moment on the album, I think. It, it's very uncanny valley. You know what I mean? Yeah, bro. And then, and then a fucking hits you over the head with grief in that fanatasia yeah. after a little bit. Take a second. Yeah. Oh, there it goes. Crazy phrasing. With the fucking saxophone just going, no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> I have written down while I was listening to that song, saxophones going crazy. <laughs> I think I wrote that down exactly. Yeah. 
<laughs> just just wild how that one sounds. I don't know, man. I don't even know where to start kind of like approaching this one, though, because it's so esoteric and strange with all the lyrics. I mean, it's very abstract in its pacing. Sometimes I'm left kind of wishing there was a stronger song at the core of it all, but at the same time, they don't really got to do all that. So I don't know. I think Talking Radiance was the, and I feel yeah. like Zigzag and Second Rhythm did it fine. Yeah. Is it fine build up? L- Lip Sync 2 feels the most structured to me, which is another reason why it's one of my favorites, but it also just goes so hard. I mean, the dissonance with the different instruments at one point is just, it feels like chaos that eventually comes together and gets all noisy and shit. It's awesome. I also want to point out, I showed this album to my mom and she enjoyed it. Well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> like, like this morning I sent it to her and she was like, oh, this is fucking sick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I am glad to hear it. <laughs> so it has, it has Micah's mother's seal of approval. That's a good seal of approval to have, I suppose. It gets our seal of approval pretty strongly, too, I think. Would you say so? Yeah, I just thought it was funny because this is, like, not my mom's bag whatsoever. She's more into, like, yeah. <laughs> metal, <laughs> like, traditional metal. She, but if it's got a female vocalist, she's always, like, more tuned, keen to, like, actually give it a chance. Yeah, yeah, and I think the fact that it has a female vocalist really adds a lot and makes this more interesting than it yeah. could have been. I always forget, I'm not even lying, I, I always am just like, oh, yeah, this shit goes hard. And then I'm like, oh, and it's a female vocalist in the punk scene. That's, like, you don't see that too often. Not super often, no. And I think that her vocals are really defined the sound here it really adds a totally different edge to it yeah bro i have a dream concert in my brain now too it would be these guys uh idols and the garden i don't know what order that would go in between the garden (laughs) and the idols but that would be pretty cool you're right yeah yeah if you if you put those things together you kind of have you kind of have the right elements going on there i feel like that would be the best show ever yeah this would go super hard live because the drums and the bass on everything kind of just rips the whole way through now live this would blow my dick and my knee come clean off (laughs) your your knee would just shatter (laughs) (laughs) again again yes even like lyrically i was doing a little deep dive and i'm like oh this is like something less claypool would be saying right now Uh, yeah it's very strange lyrically i have no idea what to make of it which makes me not sure how to approach the album and how to think of it as a whole because i'm just like what the fuck are these words this is like exactly my bag yeah yeah i suppose i don't know man it, it's it's doing a lot with the lyrics i just don't know what to do with them enjoy them <laughs> enjoy them <laughs> enjoy them. yeah i suppose i suppose you definitely could it becomes like just part of the weird sound to me i'm like yeah, yeah you, of course you're saying some weird shit well, especially with how monotone she is throughout the entire time mm-hmm. i'm just like remember when i was texting you like oh yeah we should make monotone goth synth americana and i'm just throwing a bunch of genre takes yeah <laughs> that's basically <laughs> this, this is what i was talking about yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah we might as well just end up here yeah i think the monotone vocals add a different dynamic to things that's really cool because yeah. i feel like i should be hearing just some dude shouting but i'm not i don't know this can't really be defined by a sound specifically oh no this is definitely post-punk wouldn't it be right yeah it is but it's got just like a lot of other elements like the jazz stuff happening here is just totally different art punk art punk in post-punk is and no no noise rock i think art punk oh it's on captured tracks that's mac demarco's original label oh nice Huh. Interesting. Yeah. I know that it took them a super long time to put this album out from their last one. I did. Yeah, that, like, yeah. I think this is five or six years later, something like that. Probably the Rona getting all in that. That's true. That's true, yeah. I really hope they're kind of back in full force and really like go into town with it in the near future here. Because while I do love everything this album is doing sonically and the ideas that it's presenting to me uh all throughout i just think they can go a little harder yeah definitely this is not their peak no this is not their peak i think that this can rock a bit harder like it it can hit heavier at some point and i think that maybe if we get a little bit more tuneful of a chorus at some point going on in some of these songs if you get like just some shit that hits a little bit more aggressively because when they get in that pocket it goes super hard 
but um yeah I, I think it could be doing a little bit more what was your least favorite track my least favorite track on here ends up being default parody it's kind of just in one ear and out the other for me um i feel a little bit <sighs> similarly about zigzag and concrete lily but not quite as much oh no i really liked uh zigzag i, I whatever I, I, I can see that i really liked default parody though hmm yeah concrete lily was my least favorite i think concrete lily is definitely a solid low moment on it like if we were to point at one yeah 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 definitely what was your overall score? my overall score ends up being a 75 on this because i just i think they can push it farther i like this a lot more than the average man i gave it an 84 i liked it just a little bit more than the richie album nice nice that is pretty cool. Oh, shit. We have a shorter episode for this week for y'all. Yeah. But then we can just go ahead and move on into the rankings for the week. Starting from the bottom going to the top. Bottom album for the week. We got Only in Ohio by The Black Keys. Uh, 50%. <laughs> I had to hit him with the Ohio meme at some point. Uh, <laughs> I was I was hoping that we were better than that. No. <laughs> I will eat that low hanging fruit. Thank you very much. Um, 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 um. Yum, 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 yum. Coming in as mid as you can possibly get at a cool 50%. The Libertines coming in at a 66% with all uh, quiet on the Eastern Esplande. Did I say all that correctly? Yeah, yeah okay. I think so. Okay, I cool. heard the kitty jingle. Uh, yeah, he's over there. He's over there vibing still. <laughs> Make a meow. <laughs> uh, Drala Angel Tape comes in third place for the week. A pretty promising record for this band, and I think that they're doing something really interesting, and I think they can only go up from here realistically. Uh, they're sitting at a 79.5% from us, and I hope in the next couple of years to just be like hitting them with a 100 because shit like they could they could it's really interesting sound they got here i got close yeah yeah you got a lot closer than me so i mean it's definitely it's definitely in the cards uh, at least on your end if not both of us richie coming through with his first solo project triple digits at an 80.5 percent between the two of us this week and then tippity top highly anticipated vampire weekend comeback only god was above us at a 91.5 percent and that's what we're looking at for the week again kind of did a little little trip down memory lane with all the indie rock stuff for this channel so i'm hoping some of y'all stuck around i would totally understand if not um but hey we got we got some we got some stuff we got some cool stuff we got some mid stuff but mostly cool stuff so yeah. hell yeah to this week in music that is just about going to wrap it up for us though if you've made it this far in the podcast clearly you liked it a little bit so go ahead and drop a like on the video absolutely feel free to share it around to some friends as well that'd be super awesome as well and you can hit the subscribe button for more episodes of this podcast and more music related content coming your way shortly Micah, do you have anything to say to the people before we head on out of here? Go back and rate the Dish of the Tree album because uh, it, it has two lower views on it, so now it's lower than it should be. So go rate. Right yeah, hop on Album of the Year and inflate those ratings. Don't inflate them. Just listen to the album. But <laughs> Don't inflate them. Listen to them, enjoy it, then rate it like correctly. There is a right answer. There is a right answer. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. Well, with that... We are heading on out of here, and we'll see y'all next week. Highly anticipated Vampire Weekend comeback. What the fuck? <laughs>